I can assure you that this together movement is not a reward. Now how do I know that? Because it promotes ecumenism. And what is ecumenism? It is the bringing together of all the Christian denominations back under the Roman Catholic core. That's right. That's what ecumenism is. And essentially, it's bringing all the religions together as one. Just as it was at the Tower of Babel. See, at the Tower of Babel, it was one religion. It was one speech. It was one language. It was one currency. And that's what it's going to be in the last days. For the last days, under the Antichrist and false prophet, it is going to be a one-world currency, a one-world religion, and a one-world government. Some know it as the New World Order. Well, that is biblical. A New World Order is biblical. And that's the kind of system we're going to have under the Antichrist and false prophet. It is going to be a one-world everything. That's right, friends. And that's why movements like this are promoting that. It's the movement, the Together Movement, Nick Hall, the, the Reset Movement, it promotes ecumenism. That's why at Together 2016, that's why Pope Francis made an appearance. Now, he didn't make a physical appearance, but he did make an appearance on the screen. And Pope Francis gave his stamp of approval of Together 2016. Now, why is that? What business, what business do Christians, so-called Christians have, yoking together with the Pope? Because the Pope is Antichrist. The Pope is a false prophet. That's right, friends. And true born-again Christians do not yoke up with Rome. Roman Catholicism is a mother whore. It talks about revelation. That's right. It is a mother whore. And see, the Pope and the Vatican, they're calling all the Christian denominations to come back together. They're calling all the Christian denominations to come back home to Rome. And that's why we have to come out here and we have to rebuke and reprove and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Because a time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. Friends, do not heed to yourselves these teachers teaching false doctrine. Because Jesus, he didn't come to bring peace on the earth. Jesus came with a sword. He came to divide. Jesus came to divide the goats from the sheep and the tares from the wheat. That's right, friends. Jesus didn't come to bring peace. Jesus didn't come with the coexist movement. Jesus didn't come with the tolerant movement. He came to divide, friends. That's right. He came to divide the light from the dark. He came to divide the children of obedience from the children of disobedience. So we have to choose this day who we're going to serve, friends. Let's not serve the ecumenical movement of together. Let's not serve that movement. That movement is antichrist. That movement is antithetical to the word of God. That's right, friends. It is antithetical to the word of God. The together movement is promoting a false Christ. It is promoting the Antichrist. It promotes a counterfeit Christ. Ecumenism is from the pits of hell. Ecumenism is what was taking place at the Tower of Babel. That's why God had to come down and confound the languages. That's why God had to separate the people. Because they were trying to ascend. They were trying to ascend just like Lucifer did. And Satan's doing that now. He's doing that now with counterfeit Christianity. He's doing that now by creating this ecumenical movement. That's right, friends. I know many of you may not be familiar with the term ecumenism. Google ecumenism. Google the ecumenical movement. Google the one world religion. Because that's what this movement, that's what Together 2016 and the Together Reset movement promote. It promotes the Antichrist ecumenical one world movement. That's right, friends. That's right, friends. Read your Bible. Read Revelation 13. I'm sorry. I'm preaching the Word of God. What do you mean? Uh, the Word of God says the Word of God does not return void, right? How can I prove it? Read the Word of God. Read the Word of God. The Word of God says, Jesus said, Go ye up into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I see all sorts of people out here tonight who need to hear the truth. That's right. This is my pulpit, friends. This is my pulpit. And see, the hecklers, they don't want to hear the truth. 
the hecklers don't want to hear the truth. See, Jesus Christ, he does love me and he loves you too. But you know what Jesus loves more than anything? He loves a repentant sinner, friends. Do not be deceived by the ecumenical movement, friends. Do not be deceived by the one world religion. Do not be deceived by the Antichrist and the false prophet. Because that's what the Together Movement promotes. All these Christian conferences, all these Christian conferences and concerts, they promote the ecumenical one world religion. That's right, friends. Revelation 13. Read Revelation 13. What takes place in the Revela in Revelation 13 is the rise of the Antichrist. It's the rise of the false prophet. It's the rise of the beast system. That's right, friends. We're going to read Revelation 13. Because most of churches, most churches in America will not preach on Revelation 13. They're not preparing you for what's to come. And we need to be prepared. That's why we're to, that's why we're to read this word and study it day in and day out. Hallelujah. And it says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, and, uh, I'm sorry, and having, and having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. This beast was unlike unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. All the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. That's three and a half years. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. That's right. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming out out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast. Beast before him. And caused them the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. That's right. It says he's going to deceive people through his miracles. Them that dwell on the earth, if that they should make an image to the beast, they're going to make an image to this beast. They're going to make an image to the Antichrist, which hath the wound by a sword and did live. And he hath power to give life unto the image of the beast. He had, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calls them all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in, in their right hand, or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score and six. Six, six, six. That's right. That's right. So what we just read in Revelation 13 was the one world religion. It's the one world government. It's the one world currency. It's the 
one world everything. It's the one world system. It's the ecumenical system. It's the peace system. It's called the New World Order, friends. And that's what is coming on the scene. That is what is coming on the scene. And it's almost here now, friends. It is almost here now. So when we come to these places and they preach that ecumenical together movement, they are leading you back to Rome. They are leading you to the Antichrist. They are leading you to the false prophet. They are leading you to the peace. And that's why you need to be aware of these things, friends. Because you're not going to hear this kind of message. You will not hear this message preached in your average church in America on Sunday. You will not hear this message in church on Sunday, friends. You don't hear many churches preach about Revelation 13. You don't. You don't hear, you don't hear many churches preach against ecumenism. You don't hear many churches preach against the one world religion. Because that's what you're being prepared for. You're being prepared for a one world religion. You're being prepared to accept the beast. You're being prepared to accept the antichrist. That's what you're being prepared for. And they use it through music. Just like we see in Daniel, in the book of Daniel, chapter 3. In Daniel 3, I believe it is. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and read it. Music is always used in the worship of false gods just as it was in the book of Daniel. And, and, and in the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, he is a picture. Nebuchadnezzar is a picture of the Antichrist. He is a picture of the Antichrist. And it says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof was six cubits. He set, it, he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together. They were gathered together. That's right. They were gathered together. They were gathered together, friends, unto the dedication of the image of Nebuchadnezzar. The king had set up. And they stood before the image of Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried out loud, to you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at, the, at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, and the flute, and the harp, and the sackbut, and the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, that ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. That's right, friends. So music, 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 music is used. Music is used in promotion of the Antichrist. See, once again, friends, Nebuchadnezzar was a picture of the Antichrist. Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 3 is a picture of the Antichrist. He set up an image, and you had to bow down and worship this image. And if you did not worship this image, you would be tossed in the fire. You would be tossed in the fire if you did not worship this image. And guess what? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they would not bow down to this image. And they were thrown in the fire. And guess who met them in the fire? We see it in Daniel 3.25. Guess who met them in the fire? It was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he kept them and he saved them from being burned up in that fire. Friends, he's trying to keep you from being burned up in that fire. But if you fall down and you worship the Antichrist, if you fall and you take the mark of the beast, you will be tossed in the fire as well. Once a person takes the mark of the beast, once a person falls down and, and worships the Antichrist, there is no salvation at that point. 
Salvation has been cut off when they fall down and worship the beast. And that's why we should not fall. We should not fall for the ecumenical together movement. We should not fall for that movement, friends, because that movement is anti-Christ. That movement is promoting that all Christian denominations come back together to the Roman Catholic whore. That's right. That they come together. He's drawing you together. He's drawing the souls together. Just like they did in Daniel 3. Just like they did in Daniel 3. This is what happens in Revelation 13. If you do not fall down and worship the image of the beast, if you do not fall down and worship the image of the Antichrist, and take his, his number, and take his mark, and take his name, if you do not, then you will be beheaded for If you do not take it, you'll be beheaded for Christ. Are you willing to be beheaded for Christ? Are you willing to lose your life for Jesus Christ? Because when that fire is churned up, when that fire is churned up, just like it was to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when that fire gets churned up in these last days, are you gonna be with are you gonna be with are you gonna withstand? Are you gonna withstand? Do you have the Holy Spirit? That seal of promise of the Holy Spirit. Do you want that upon your life, friends? Because tribulation is coming into this world. Persecution is coming into this world. It's already happening in countries like North Korea, in Sudan, in China. Our brethren are being murdered for the name of Christ. Now what about in America? What about in America? When that fire gets churned up and the Antichrist comes on the scene, are you going to bow down and take that mark? Are you going to take that mark in your forehead or in your right hand? Are you going to bow down to the golden image of Nebuchadnezzar? See, friends, that's why they use music. That is why they use music. Just like they did in Daniel 3, they use the music. They use the music to appeal to people. They use the music to worship their God. They use the music to worship their God. See, Lucifer, Lucifer was the angel of music in heaven. He was the anointed chair that covered. And Ezekiel 28, it tells us that he had instruments built in him. He had instruments built in him. And day and night, day and night, it was all about the praise and the worship of God. That's why music was created. Music was created for the praise and the worship of God. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else, friends. But see, Satan, Satan as Lucifer, he knows how to get to people. He knows how to appeal to your senses. He knows how to appeal to your pride. He knows how to appeal to your love. And that's why he attacks the people through the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. He never changes his tactics. It was the same tactics he used in the garden to eat. He appealed to the lust of the flesh. He appealed to the lust of her eyes. And he appealed to the pride of life. And he does that still today, friends. And that's why, friends, that's why we're out here. That's why I'm out here today. To call you to mark and avoid. Mark and avoid, as it says in Romans 16, 17, and 18. To mark and avoid the together movement. To mark and avoid the ecumenical movement, friends. So we have to mark and avoid this movement because it's leading everybody back to Rome. It's leading everybody back to the mother whore, the Catholic Church. That's why you can have Catholics and Baptists and Presbyterians and Reformed and Calvinists and Lutherans and Pentecostals and Charismatics and Assemblies of God and so on and so forth. That's why you can have all these different denominations come to the same event. Because they put aside doctrine. They put aside doctrine. God bless you. They put aside doctrine. They put aside doctrine, friends. They put aside the doctrine. They say, hey, you know what? Let's put aside our doctrine and let's unite on false pretenses. That's what they do, friends. And that's what the Together Movement is all about. At Together 2016, July 16th, 2016, I will never forget that day. Because that day is the day I was born, and that is the day that I was married. And that's also the day that the ecumenical movement took place in Washington, D.C. And Pope Francis, that's right, Pope Francis gave his stamp of approval on the event. He let everybody know who's running that show. That's right. So Lecrae, when he was there, and Hillsong, and Nick Hall, the organizer of the event, the one that's here tonight, 
They basically said, yes, we come in agreement with this movement. We come in agreement with ecumenism. We come in agreement with the one world religion. But friends, that is the movement of Antichrist. That is the movement that is going to be taking place very shortly, friends. And we are being prepared for it now. That's why you must be in your word. That's why you must pray fervently, friends. Be in your word day and night. Read the book of Revelation. Because these things are starting to come to pass. Read Revelation 13. And you will see what it says in the scriptures, friends. You will see what it says. That's right, friends. It says that the Antichrist is going to come on the scene. And if you don't bow down and worship him, if you don't bow down and, and, and call upon his name and take his mark in your forehead, and what is what does it mean in the scripture when it says in your forehead? It's talking about your soul. It's talking about your conscience. So you accept in your mind and in your heart. You accept the mark of the beast. You accept it in your mind. You will accept it in your heart. That's right. That means you're giving your heart. You're giving your heart over to the beast and the beast system. And that's what this kind of movement promotes. That's what the together movement promotes. It wants to draw all the people together back to Rome. That's right, friends. And throughout all the centuries, throughout all the years, the Roman Catholics, the Roman Catholicism, the Vatican, they persecuted real Christians. They persecuted real Christians. That's right. That's why we see in most of your modern churches today. That's why they're going away from the Word of God. That's why they're bringing perverted Bibles into the purpose today. That's because they're being overtaken by the spirit of Antichrist. That's right, friends. They are going for the vine of Sodom. It is a vine of Sodom. It is a different root. That's right, friends. They are leading you back to Rome. Friends, all roads lead to Rome. When you track the Together Movement, when you track Nick Hall's Together Movement, it leads back to Rome. It leads back to the Pope. It leads back to the false prophets. It leads back to the Antichrist, friends. It does. And that's why we have to be Bereans. The Word of God says that we are to be Bereans. Search the Scripture out daily to see if these things are so. Search the scriptures out, friends, and see if the things that I'm saying to you tonight are true. Because you will find that they are. I have no reason to lie. I'm not out here to make money. I'm just out here to tell you the truth, friends. I'm out here to tell you the truth. That this movement is ecumenical. This movement promotes the Antichrist. And what does Antichrist mean? It means instead of Christ. The Antichrist is a counterfeit Christ. That's right. He's going to come on the scene at first. When he first comes on the scene, he's going to come and he's going to be promoting peace. That's right. Why don't we just read it? Because when they say peace, or when they say safety, then shall sudden destruction come. We are truly living in the last days, friends. And we need to be prepared for what's coming. You need to be prepared. You're not going to hear this kind of message at your average church on Sunday mornings. You're not going to hear this at an Andy Stanley or a Jensen Franklin or a Bethel or a Joel or a Joyce. You won't hear this kind of message. And it says, friends, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. That's right. Peace who gathers us together. That's right. Not the peace, not the secularical movement. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. And let no man, let no man, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. The falling away is the apostasy. The apostasy, we see it now. The falling away is in full effect right now, friends. Apostasy is here. People are apostatizing. They're believing a false gospel. They're, they're heaping to themselves teachers having engineers. And it says, friends, it says that that falling away come first, and the man of sin be revealed the sin of perdition. Who is the man of sin? Who is the son of perdition? It is the beast. It is the Antichrist. It says that we will not be gathered. We will not be gathered together unto Christ. 
until that falling away happens and until the Antichrist comes on the scene. So what does that mean, friends? That scripture right there, it dispels all the pre-trib rapture nonsense. That's right. We will go to tribulation. What makes us think we're any better than our brethren? What makes us think that we're any better than our brethren who went through tribulation? How you doing, brother? I think we met before. We had at the uh, uh, zombie fest. Yes. Yes. How you doing? God bless you. What's your name again, Rico? Ricardo. Ricardo. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh, I do. I recognize you. God bless. Amen. Thank you for being here. Amen. Amen. Can I can I share something with you? Please. Uh, did you were you in here for the uh, Nick Hall talk? The other uh, movement? Uh, I think I saw some of that. Uh, well, a lot of people they're not aware, but that's well, that's one of the things that I'm uh, The Together movement is an outward ecumenism. Yeah, I know about that. The Together movement is essentially an ecumenical movement to bring all the Christian denominations back together as one in the Catholic Church. That's why the, the Together movement that happened in July 16, 2016, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I wanted to go to that event, but my wedding was more important than going to that event. Yeah, I think your wife would be a little different. I was like, hey, babe, we could have went up there and had a wedding. But anyway, oh, anyway, oh, so that event, that you know, it truly, you know, all these different creatures, oh, all these different new musicians, still songs, with Ray, you know, these types of things. And uh, Pope Francis also came here, not physically, but via, via stream, giving this ample food on the event. And essentially, as we see in Revelation 13, you know, all, everything can be united in one, one world religion. So, that's why I'm out here preaching, preaching, you know, basically that we need to uh, be in our word, maybe and take the days of drawing in. Just as you were coming out, I was actually reading the second Thessalonians 2. Oh, yeah, I was listening at this one. Oh, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me let you continue. I will be praying for you. God bless you. Good to see you again, too. Likewise, more will the grass that cross paths and get into the Amen. 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 You are, you got. Uh, Brother Wayne's information, right? Amen. Cool. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. I met that brother at another event preaching. Praise God. That's awesome how the Lord works. So as I was reading, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means. So we know, just as Jesus told us in Matthew 24, the last days will be shrouded. It will be covered in deception. That's right, friends. Deception is the number one means the enemy tries to use. It is his number one tactic, is deception. And he's very subtle. Just like it says in the garden, the serpent was the most subtle beast of the field. And the Antichrist is going to be the most subtle religious leader that ever steps foot on this earth. And it says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That is the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to come, and he's going to say, I'm Jesus Christ in the flesh. He's going to magnify himself and say he is God in the flesh. But he is Antichrist, because there was only one, there was only one, there was only one God manifest in the flesh, and that was Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. See, Paul had already told them these things before he wrote this letter. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth 
and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So the beast, the Antichrist, he is going to come with all power and lying signs and wonders. And with all of the seemingness of one righteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So it says that God is going to send the strong delusion that comes. And that strong delusion is here now, friends. That strong delusion is here. That strong delusion is here. People are believing a lie. They are falling for this ecumenical together movement. They are saying, yeah, let's hold hands with the Pope. Yeah, let's hold hands with Roman Catholicism. No. Roman Catholicism needs to repent. All throughout the centuries, Roman Catholicism in the Vatican has murdered Christians. They have murdered Christians. And why is that? Because they held to the true word of God. And they would not be overtaken by popery. Christians have been persecuted all throughout the centuries. Look at the Inquisition. Look at the Crusades. Christians have been constantly been persecuted. Christianity, true biblical Christianity, is the most persecuted faith. It is the most persecuted religion in the world. I'm talking about true Christianity. I'm not talking about pseudo-false Christianity. I'm talking about the real thing, friends. That's right. And that's why the Word of God says, if you don't bow down and you don't take that mark, if you don't bow down to that golden image of Nebuchadnezzar, if you don't bow down and take that mark of the beast, if you don't take that mark, then you will be beheaded for the name of Christ. That's right. It says, all those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We're not escaping, friends. We are going to be here for this. We're going to ride this out. And my call to you, if you're in the sound of my voice, is trust in Jesus Christ today. The true Jesus of the Bible. Get in your Bible. Meditate upon that word day and night. Sit under sound teachers, friends. Don't listen to false teachers. Don't listen to false teachers who sell you a false gospel. True preachers of the Word of God are going to tell you what's coming. How you doing? God bless you. True preachers of the Word of God are going to prepare you for the tribulation that is coming in this world. For the persecution that is coming. It's already happening in North Korea. It's already happening in, in Sudan and Somalia. It's already happening in China. You can't go out and do what I'm doing in those nations. You can't. You'll be killed on the spot or thrown in jail. So while we have this time now, friends, go off on the streets, warn your friends, warn your family to flee from the wrath to come, and to trust in the true Jesus Christ, the true Jesus Christ of the King James Bible, of the King James Bible, not the non-inspired version, not the NIV, not the NLT, not the NASB, not the ESV, but the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. Because once you start comparing this Bible with the other Bibles, you will see there's a difference. You will see there's a major difference in this Bible and the rest of the Bibles that have come out in the last 30, 40, 50 years. There's a huge difference, friends. And the huge difference is they're preparing you for the Antichrist. So, I, I leave this with you today. The gap together that we're going to have is when Jesus Christ gathers us. When He gathers us and He escapes us from wrath. That is the gathering together that we're going to have, friends. Not this ecumenical movement. So repent and believe the gospel today. Repent and call upon Jesus Christ. The Jesus Christ of the Bible, friends. Not the false Christ that this world promotes. Not the false Christ that this ecumenical movement promotes. But the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Be a Berean and search the scriptures daily to see if these things that I'm telling you are true. Read the book of Revelation. Read 2 Thessalonians 2. Read Matthew 24. Read 2 Timothy 3. Read 2 Timothy 4. God is good. 
And you will see that these things that I'm telling you are true by the Word of God. Not by my words, but from Scripture and Scripture alone. I will only point you to the Word of God. Get yourself a King James Bible. Most of us have smartphones. You can pull up King James Bible apps on your phone. Go to Bible Hub and compare Scripture. Amen. Read in Daniel 3.25. It says that, that the Son of God appeared with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. It was the Son of God. But the modern Bible say, a son of the gods. That's right. It says a son of the gods and the NIV and the ESV and the NLT. But the King James Bible, it says it was the son of God that appeared with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. Read in the, in, in the King James Bible, it says that he, he, in Revelation 13, 16, he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hands or in their foreheads. In the NIV, it says it, it forces. You're not going to be forced to take the mark of the beast, friends. You're going to be caused to take it. You're going to want it. You're going to want it because unless you're sold out to Christ, your flesh, your flesh, is going to cling to the mark of the beast. You have to be sold out to Christ. The Antichrist ain't going to have to force anybody to take the mark. You're going to want it. Unless you're born again. Unless you're truly led by the Holy Spirit. So the Word of God says examine yourself. See whether you be in the faith or not, friends. Examine yourself tonight. When you're by the bedside. When you're by your bedside tonight, friends. Examine yourself. To see if you're actually in the faith or not. Examine yourselves, friends, and call upon Jesus today, the Jesus Christ of the Bible, not the Jesus Christ, not the Jesus of the ecumenical movement, because Jesus has no part of the ecumenical movement. Jesus has no part of together. How are you doing? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Read Revelation 13, friends. Read Matthew 24, friends, and you'll see these things that I'm telling you are true. Jesus is not part of the ecumenical movement. He's not part of together. He's not friends. Jesus said, think not that I come to bring peace. I did not come to bring peace, but I've come to bring a sword. Jesus came to divide. He came to divide, friends. He came to divide the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the tares, the light from the darkness, the children of obedience and the children of disobedience. So call upon the true Jesus today, friends. Call upon Him. Repent and believe the gospel and you will be saved. And you will be saved. God bless you all. And God bless everybody who sees this video. Call upon Jesus today. Do not fall for the ecumenical movement. The ecumenical movement, the together movement, is a movement spearheaded by the mother whore of the Catholic Church, preparing the whole entire world for the beast, for the false prophet, for the Antichrist. He is coming. These things will come to pass. The Bible has never been proven wrong. The true Bible, the Word of God, the King James Bible, has never been proven wrong. This word is the truth. Jesus said, sanctify them, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.